Boss battles. They're in almost every game in existence. Some boss battles are hard, some are fun, some are in between. But today, since it's me, of course, we're doing top 5 worst and best boss battles in all of the Sly Cooper series. Now, before I go any further, I want to thank you guys for the abundance of support on the last top five worst and best video for Sly. It got so much love and I appreciate it. I put a lot of time and effort into these videos and maybe not a whole lot of people see them, but it just warms my heart whenever people say that it was a good video or the editing's good. It, it, it means a lot. I, I really, I really appreciate it. Now, starting with the worst first, just like I did last time, because the worst is always first. Now, I'm ranking these boss battles on how rememberable they were and how fun they were, the difficulty, the build-up, the world surrounding them, the story, everything. And this is 100% my opinion, so if you're butthurt over one of my choices, then just wait for the next one because you might appreciate it. Now I'm counting Carmelarja as a boss because for one she has a health bar and it's kind of in the operation of the episode so I'm counting it. This boss appears in Sly 3 episode 2 Rumble Down Under, one of the worst episodes in all of Sly. I think we all can agree on that. Now we all know Carmelita. In the final mission of episode 2, after the Cooper gang fails to destroy the Mask of Dark Earth for like the 10th time, it attaches to Carmelita. So anyway, she started blasting at Sly. Bentley was having none of that shit. So he had the big brain idea of pumping her with sleep darts. That sounds like I could get arrested for saying that. Surprisingly, this doesn't work. She turns into Big Chungus. It's an annoying boss fight. It's not very fun. The only part that was really rememberable was climbing up her boot lace and uh, her being dummy thick, but we don't talk about that. Now the Panda King is a little sore loser who wanted to make fireworks, so he did. He made one firework. Trying to impress all of China, he made one firework. Panda King was like, oh you don't like the Big Bang? Well here's this Big Bang. Would you look at that, a fireworks! All in all, the Panda King can't handle rejection, so he gets big mad and starts burying villages in snow. Anyways, his boss battle was just ridiculously easy, and you end up doing it twice in the entire series, and it, 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 moving along. Where do I even start with this one? Oh god. Her boss battle is just a glorified Panda King, but it's a hundred times more difficult. By this point in the story, you just want to beat the living shit out of her, and you never actually get the satisfaction of whipping her ass. And... Wait a minute. I just realized her name is Miss Decibel, and her passion is music, and her name is Miss Decibel, the measurement of sound. Oh, that's pretty cool. Okay, Sly4, you got one. You got one. After all the build up in your five to seven hour playthrough, all you want to do is beat the shit out of this arrogant little asshole. And guess what? You get a bunch of quick time events that are very, very forgiving. All for nothing. Sly gets stuck in ancient Egypt and has been for the past nine years, all because of this dumb cunt. They literally couldn't have come up with a better boss battle than quick time events? I mean, Lafui's boss battle was mainly just quick time events, but it was kind of hidden and you could kind of move around freely. Maybe it was just left to right, but at least it was still a little bit of movement. It, it's just so damn underwhelming. 
And for extra sad boy points, this is the last boss battle we have ever gotten in this series, and it fucking sucked. Time for the biggest douchebag in all of Sly. It's not Clockwork. It's not Dr. M. It's not Le Paradox. It's General Fuckbock Chicken over here. And he's a cock. <laughs> Literally. To make a long story short, remember Great Value brand Kung Fu Panda from earlier? Yeah, it turns out he has a daughter. I feel bad for the poor soul he somehow fucked. But anyway, she gets captured by General Sow Chicken over here. And what does this cunt do about it? He goes to the middle of nowhere and fucking meditates. It's not until Sly needs his help to where he's like, I, I don't I'm fuck, fuck with you. And goes to save her. And General Cream and Sun Young Guy Chicken is the most sexist, arrogant asshole I know. Ah well, perhaps my meditation will be more focused amid the splendor of my treasure temple. Oh, it gets worse, Koopa. Up until now, I've gone easy on you. But now, now you'll sample the ancient black art of the family Tao! Uh, why try to convince you? when I can simply destroy you. This sacred forest has been the stage for hundreds of battles as my ancestors crushed anyone who got in their way. And you will be no different. Oh my god, shut the fuck up. But she doesn't want to marry you. She's a woman. She doesn't know up from down. Whoa, 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 whoa. This game has an E rating? Okay. And even after his boss fight, both parts, it doesn't even matter. You end up fighting a dragon at the end. And the heist mission is such a pain in the ass. For one, why do I need to dodge all these laser beams? Even though at the end I destroy all of them, but I fail if I hit them. I remember one time whenever I was young and I was playing this mission and I got right to the end, instead of shooting the terminal, I accidentally shot the glass and having to restart it completely over. And why do I have to protect these vases from falling over? Even though in a previous mission I could destroy them and not have any repercussions at all. Just... <clears throat> I think my point is made. Let's move on to the best ones. The Sly Force started off with a banger of a first episode. Beautiful setting, great diverse map, great music, and a great finishing boss fight. In the boss fight area, it's yet again another beautiful setting and a fun, engaging boss battle. Not much else to say really, I just love this episode in general. Not to mention the dialogue in this final fight really sets the mood and gets a good bit of laughs out of me. El Jefe. Hmm, isn't that Spanish for big baby? Ah, enough of these stupid games! For such a tough guy, he sure runs away a lot. And it's a really good hype up for the rest of the game, even though it was a disappointment. One thing I want to mention about the game is how Sanzaru actually put in clockwork hidden and around the map in certain missions in all the episodes. Well, not all of them, but you know what I mean. It, it's such a fucking cool attention to detail that I just wish the rest of the game was like. Oh, and just in case you forgot, Murray cross dresses and gets his ass smacked by this dude. Okay, where to start? Jumbasan may not have that great of a backstory. He got frozen for decades and thawed out, unlike the hamburger you forgot to take out of the freezer for your mom. Just saying. But besides that, his boss battle was awesome. You play as Bentley and you feel powerless against this giant Clifford the Big Red Bison. But with the help of your team, you take him down. And it feels so fucking good to watch him fall over and die. And even since I was young, I just loved this boss battle. And it's always nice to play again. Every single time I replay it, like, 50 times a, a year. Now, I'll be honest, Sly 4 was really forgettable. In my head, I don't even see it as canon. I don't really remember the backstory right now, or the world it's set in, 
or what's even going on? Well, I kind of remember. So you may be wondering, if I'm talking all this shit, why is it even on the list? Well, to start, Murray gets butt hurt whenever he gets showed up by Bob, Sly's ancestor. Really, Murray? Are you not used to it by now? But anyways, Murray has a big comeback in fighting a fucking grizzly bear while skating on ice and dancing. Okay, that was a very bad oversimplification of it, but honestly, it was fun and creative. It's such a dense boss fight that you could float on the shit. Okay, that was a dumb science joke, but you get the point. Now, I may be spoiling a future video by saying this, but Sly 3 Episode 3 is my most favorite episode of all time. It's a beautiful map, a nice soundtrack, 99% of the missions are actually fun and don't feel like a chore, but the boss fight is right after shooting down the Baron in his plane, while you're in a plane, and then hand-to-hand -hand fighting on a plane wing, and after a kinda difficult boss fight, you finally get to s Penelope? You mean the girl who's been helping the gang out and who we've never seen in person and who's supposedly the Baron's mechanic who's been probably feeding us bad information this entire time? What? Y'all probably saw this coming. Now, you may have been expecting this, like I said, but this boss battle is just so fucking good. The original game, not the remaster. That it just has to be first. And by the way, Senzaru, if you're going to re-release the games, at least change the sound engine so it'll sync up perfectly with the best boss fight in the game. Like, you had one job. You didn't even crop the cutscenes to a 16 by 9 ratio. That literally just takes a rescaling. It's an MP4 file. Like... Come on, you could have done so much better with the re-release, and I hope that the PS5 gets one or something and it's just made better. Now that Sanzaru is bought out by Facebook, maybe another company can get a hold of it because right now Facebook owns the rights to Sly. But anyway, yeah, this boss fight is just amazing. What's up, Mick? You said that you were just complaining about the Paradox's boss fight and it was bad because it was quick time event. But all this boss fight is, is quick time. Shut the fuck up. This one was good, because it was made by Sucker Punch. Anyway, sorry this video took so long to release. I I have been writing this script for like a month now. It's 11 pages and I hand wrote all of it, it wasn't typed. And I literally went and bought another Elgato to record the footage specifically for this video in any future video after, but I spent $100 on an Elgato. I am really passionate about my Sly videos and the support on them is just amazing. Every time I upload a video, I know I'm just gonna get some great feedback from you guys. and. We need to come together as one, the entire Sly community, and tell Sony, hey, we want another Sly game. That'd be pretty nice. You know, please, thank you, Sony. That'd be very nice. Can we have uh, Sly 5, please? I don't care if it ends after that, but please. But anyways, guys, thank you for the massive amount of support on these videos. More are definitely coming. I'm already writing another script for another video that I think is going to be very interesting. It's actually original Sly content that I came up with, so be prepared for that. And I have another plan, if you haven't already clicked off the video, because most people do whenever the outro starts. I have a plan for a nostalgia week. I plan on, for a week, uploading every single day of that week playing games that are very nostalgic to me and while I'm playing them just saying some stories that I remember from playing them as a young kid. I always enjoyed this type of content where I could sit back and listen to a YouTuber play an old game like how Jack played Spyro and just talking about stories about his uh, past playing the game. I really enjoy that and I would really love to do that for you guys so be prepared for that. So anyway thank you guys so much for watching and I will definitely see you in the next video. Touch